Ram have just released a brand new group set, the second generation of Force Access. 12 speed, fully wireless, new levers, new chain rings, new power meter, and super bling. So bling, in fact, they've had to call the color unicorn gray. And it has laser foil decals. I am gonna take you through all the details of this new version of the seasoned performer. Force has long been a stalwart of the gravel scene, but I've got a feeling that with this latest generation, SRAM are going full throttle for the hearts and minds of performance-oriented and style-conscious road riders as well. Now, first of all, whilst there has been an aesthetic revolution on this group set, performance-wise, it is more of an evolution, but then that is no bad thing, not at all. Since its inception in 2015, SRAM's wireless shifting has quietly been impressing cyclists the world over. And while the Tin Hat Brigade initially predicted that the proprietary wireless protocol would be hacked and so rival cyclists could sabotage you at key moments, that's not proven to be the case either because it can't be hacked, or more to the point, no one can probably be bothered. It doesn't even interfere with your 5G phone reception. Or at least not as much as your COVID vaccine anyway. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, okay? For a long time, SRAM's ETAP wireless shifting was confined only to its top tier of drop bar group sets, red. But then in 2019, SRAM released it to the second tier as well, force. All of the electronics, the motors, the architecture of the chain, the chain rings and the cassette were all the same. There was just a little bit more weight in force and the chain ring design was different. So arguably the front shifting wasn't quite as precise owing to a little bit more flex in that two piece design. Now though, as you can see, the new force two by chain rings are strikingly similar to red. They've just gone into stealth mode. So they too are machined out of a single piece of aluminium for the added stiffness and shifting performance, plus a reduction in weight, which actually accounts for most of the total weight loss in the whole group set. 94 grams for a two by power meter and 104 grams saved for the one by power meter group set option. What's interesting too is that the new Force Access now has features that aren't actually available at RED yet. So we'll start with the levers. A newly designed lever body matches up with Rival that was launched a couple of years ago. So smaller diameter, aesthetically, I think they look great. And also personally, a smaller diameter lever body feels brilliant as far as I'm concerned. And they've also redesigned the shifter paddles to give you more clearance for your fingers when you're braking. Another point of interest is that the ports for the remote shifters that would normally plug in to the inside of the lever there have now gone. And that is because the remote shifters are fully wireless too. I haven't got any on my bike to show you, but theoretically it would mean that you could stick them anywhere. Additionally, the design of the front derailleur cage has also changed. It's now in line with the design that SRAM first introduced to Rival, which is the group set below this one, and that supposedly further improves front shifting performance again. Now in use, that shifting does feel really good. But I did ask SRAM about the issue of replacement chain rings, because clearly if one chain ring wears out, you can't replace it on its own. You have to replace both at the same time. And I do remember that that was something that caused a bit of controversy when RED launched back in 2019. And so here we are now, four years on, SRAM has said that so few people have worn out their RED chain rings, they didn't feel like it was an issue for most consumers. So apparently just 0.7% of RED rings have been replaced through premature wear. 
And to be fair to SRAM, they have long touted the durability of their group sets. I've never experienced anything to the contrary, and I looked online and I couldn't see or hear anything there either. And so they say that their 12 speed group sets should last 50% longer than their 11 speed group sets, and the flat top chain is a key reason for that. But that said, mountain bikers rave about the durability of 12 speed Eagle group sets, and they don't have flat top chains, so clearly there's something else as well. Back to the rings, another advantage for going to that one piece design is that on the power meter option, the power meter itself is built directly into the rings, which SRAM say further improves the accuracy and the accuracy over time as well. And the likelihood is that more people will be using the power meter option because apparently bike brands have begun to spec more power meters on their bikes. By SRAM's reckoning, about 45% of all bikes sold with Force 2 by will have the power meter fitted. Speaking of options, as you probably already know, SRAM's Axis platform gives you a bonkers array of setup variations. And this group set is, of course, compatible with all of the 12-speed products. The rear derailleur on here, for a start, has that built-in chain management system. So you can run new force access one by, so with a single chaining up front, or two by, as I got here. And in both variations, you get the benefit of reduced chain slap and improved chain control, hence the popularity for gravel. Speaking of gravel, there is a 1044 wide ratio cassette option, which is part of the Explore range of products. To use that one, you will need a Force Explore rear derailleur. And then, if you feel the need for an even wider ratio cassette, it's still compatible with SRAM's mountain bike Eagle components. So you can use a SRAM Eagle Access rear derailleur and cassette, and then you get a 1052 cassette option. There is now an additional option as well, again for performance-oriented road riders that was previously only available at red level, and that is the 5037 chainring combo. If you're unfamiliar with SRAM's chainring sizes, by the way, the reason the rings are slightly smaller than you might be used to is because they use a smaller 10-tooth sprocket at the back. So 5037 roughly equates to 5339. Now, interestingly, potentially, the 10 to 26 cassette option has actually now been retired. Apparently, there just wasn't the demand for it. I did also ask SRAM about even bigger chainring sizes, having seen some of the absolute whoppers being used by SRAM sponsored teams at the Tour de France. They say that there is a 5239 chainring option that's available aftermarket at red level for those that have the legs, or perhaps more accurately, the flat roads to ride it on. But that anything even bigger than that was so niche, it was just custom made for those World Tour riders. And soberingly, whilst I'd always assumed that Mass Pedersen of Trek Segafredo was using a 56 tooth front chain ring, simply because it was a massive flex and he could, it turns out that actually when the teams have been analysing the gear ratios the riders have been using, the riders have still been using that small 10 tooth sprocket even with the bigger rings. So yes, 56-10. I ran some numbers and if Mass Pedersen was sprinting at a cadence of 120 RPM on that 56-10 chain ring, he would be doing 85 kilometres per hour which would mean that he'd be having to put out roughly two and a half thousand watts on a flat road. Two and a half thousand! Back to reality, how do teams analyse their riders' gear usage, I hear you ask? Well, for the fellow geeks out there, you can upload your ride diagnostics to SRAM Axis Web, and from there you can unlock all sorts of nerdy stats for you to enjoy. And actually, to be fair, they'd be pretty useful as well if you're that way inclined. Now, another piece of good news is that the price of the new Force Axis is actually the same as the price for the previous generation of Force Axis. So yes, in a world of inflation, with the cycling community seemingly paying an additional premium on top of that, the price staying the same is very welcome news indeed.
Aftermarket, a complete two by group set with a power meter will cost 2,640 US dollars, 2,228 pounds or 2,515 euros. Without the power meter, it's roughly 500 dollars pounds or euros less. One buy with a power meter, meanwhile, is 2,142 US dollars, and in its simplest form of a one buy setup without a power meter, it's 1,832 US dollars, 1,533 pounds, 1,715 euros. As I've said before, though, that doesn't feel like a particularly good gauge of price given how few people will go out and buy a full group set on its own. So to give you an idea of what complete bikes will cost with it, Canyon have said that road models like this one, including the power meter, will be available to order in the coming weeks at around the £6,000 or €6,300 mark. And what of those aesthetics then? Personally, I absolutely love them. I think it's cool as. Get involved in the comment section down below. Let us know what you think of them as well. And actually, just as a final point, there is an additional option of an anodized rainbow finish on the cassette and the chain. It was pro only, it's now available to buy. For some reason, I wasn't trusted with it. I can't imagine why. But there you go, brand new SRAM Force Access, refined, honed, the same price as the previous generation there you go give the video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and do get involved in the comment section down below let us know what you think